In this series, I'm gonna be adventuring around some of the lesser known backpacking spots in Australia and uncovering one of its best kept secrets. Then, I'm gonna be heading over to Southeast Asia to explore Myanmar, a country that has only really recently opened its borders to tourism. And as always, it's gonna be real, it's gonna be raw, so that it really shows you what it's like if you go backpacking. Myanmar, here we come. All the plans have just been thrown up in the air. Here it is. We've been going uphill for like two hours. When you need a walking stick, it's a serious hike. I have never seen anything like this. Previously, I decided it was time to push Tom out of his comfort zone and take him on his first ever backpacking trip. It's Tom's first time in Asia. Ah. We spent a few weeks traveling around Cambodia where we'd also met up with my friend Anna Marie. We had flown into Vietnam and spent a week in Hoi An. So we made it to Vietnam, yay! You can see this place just comes alive at night, it's amazing! After failing to create our own lanterns, we carried on down the coast. Tom's first experience of the night train in Asia. Then we left Anna Marie and Vietnam and flew over to Thailand to spend New Year's and a week in Bangkok. We've been living a lie that we can't ignore, so please take all the time. So we're at the floating market. In typical Southeast Asia style, it's complete freaking chaos. We've got to live a little. Then we took the overnight train and spent a week up in Chiang Mai. You can never do too many cooking courses, right? Basically, it involves a day of eating. My kind of day. Let's hope I don't burn the kitchen down. <laughs> oh, we've done it right. Tom, what have you made? I don't know what I'm doing. I guess this is where we're sawing our lives away. Here she goes. See ya. We're going down though. We are at Chiang Mai Airport. Last night, I managed to accidentally book two lots of tickets for this flight because my computer crashed and no confirmation came through. So I was like, oh, I don't think we have tickets for this flight. We're trying to get to um, Mandalay, we're trying to get over to Mima. I'm at the Bangkok desk now trying to uh, rectify this problem and she's going to refund me for the second lot of tickets. <laughs> what a muffet. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. The plane we're about to get on is even smaller than the one I did to Port Lincoln. It's got like propellers and everything. Meanwhile, here we come. Now before we go any further here, I do need to make you aware that there are places in Myanmar that are not safe to travel and I would recommend that you go to your government website like I did and do your own research. We had sorted our 30 day visas online before we left for the trip, which took a few days to process and cost us $50 each. That note they do ask you to designate your point of entry which might be a bit tricky if you don't have a set plan however as it states here it's not set in stone but they do strongly recommend it and a quick little travel tip here is to always have a pen on you when you're on a plane because you're always filling out boarding cards right let me be honest with you up to this point in our journey I hadn't really been pushed out of my comfort zone as I'd actually been to all the countries a few times before reason I'd taken Dundee to Southeast Asia, apart from the obvious fact that it is a good place for a first time backpacker, was because I was desperate to explore Myanmar. Little travel tip for you. Always make sure you know what the exchange rate of the currency you're trying to get is, otherwise you get to an airport 
tickets for an ATM and you have no concept of how much money you need to take out. Exactly like we've just done. We also don't know how we get a taxi or a shuttle bus or anything. We've not been best prepared. Eventually we found a local bus and finally made it to our hotel. I am loving Mima so much right now. The guys at reception was just so amazing. They were so like lovely. They gave us a welcome drink. One of the guys put, packed both our bags and helped us to our room and like, oh my God, like customer service here. Epic. And the bed's soft. And the bed's soft. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm loving this place right now. Hip bones are actually bruised from uh, Thailand. Hello. Bruised. So for me and Ma, we had not planned anything. We just had a wish list of things we wanted to do. And one of them was Mr. Bike's jungle hike in Seapur that I had seen Steve Yellow and Paddy from the Budgeteers do a few months earlier. We had planned to spend a few days in Mandalay, However, after emailing with Mr. Bike, it turned out that the only availability was for a few days' time, which meant we had to get to Seaport ASAP. All the plans have just been thrown up in the air because we want to go and do this hike in Hesport tomorrow, uh, which we hadn't really planned and now we're going. So we've kind of cancelled everything we're doing here and going trying to get a ticket to go straight to Hesport. That's probably not how you pronounce it. This place is mental. So this is going to be interesting. We gotta try and get a train ticket for tomorrow. Just gotta hope to God someone speaks some English. How are we gonna book a ticket? Hi, can we get <laughs> two two tickets? The next one. <laughs> um, we wanna go to his school. Yeah, two tickets for tomorrow. Ordinary class. What the fuck does that matter? Fine. We've got to do it anyway, haven't we? Okay, yeah, that, yeah, can we get to... 16. 16. Tomorrow morning. Is that upper class? Full, okay, yeah, ordinary class. What? Oh my god. Okay, I think we might be a little bit late on the booking. Um, we're going to have, like, chickens flying at us and all sorts of crap. It's gonna be so much fun at four in the morning. But anyway, we've been to like 17 different counters and finally the guy's given us a ticket, hopefully. Just a little tip for you here. When you're booking trains in Southeast Asia, you kind of need your passport. I don't know why, but you do. We got our tickets, yeah! So we just jumped in the cab and we are going on the way to Mandalay Hill, which is where all the tourists go. Go check out some pagodas. If we have time for sunset, we don't know, because <laughs> we are just winging it. <laughs> don't really know what we're doing. We need the classic. Too lazy in the morning. Mm. And we're running out of time. We're running out of time. So we're racing to the pagoda to race the sunset. Typical. Yeah. Standard. It's all right, Charlie. But you know, yeah, the sun always waits for tourists. <laughs> Obviously, that's how it works. Here's a tour guide. He should know. We finally made it to the cathedral. Cathedral? Cause I don't know how to pronounce it. You wrote it down on a piece of paper. I get it. Still gonna get it. It is stunning here. It's so amazing. I've never seen anything like it. There's just like thousands and thousands of these little mini pagodas that are housing manuscripts on rock. And apparently, it is officially the largest book in the entire world. Wow! <laughs> There's also nobody here. Where is everybody, Ruth? Well, we, we, got, we got the place to ourselves. But look how epic this is! Anybody finds this one in you? You know, I the biggest book in the world. Also known as... A <laughs> <laughs> I really need that audio on this one, Tommy Ruth, because that's not going to work. <laughs> We're now walking through this random forest next to the pagoda. I don't know if we can get through there, Charlie. Is that an open gate? 
Okay. No, that's so not an open gate. We've just wandered into the forest and I'm carrying a load of cameras and there's people around now and looking at the funny. And this is not a good idea. Don't do this, kids. I think we should go back. We gotta, go, gotta go back there. Let's go back. So this was the wrong way. Well done, Tommy Roo. He's very good at holding cameras, talking to GoPros that have crap audio and getting us lost. Yeah, well, we're not all in tune with this fang-dangled camera scenario. Do you right? think I am? Look at the shambles that's going on here. I mean, I'm like juggling cameras left, right and centre to try and get different shots on different cameras. It's all a bit absurd. And we're going to make sunset at this rate. Hello! <laughs> I'm just walking up the hill. No, no, here. Big two lion made in turn. There are 1,729 ships. So after the guy warned us that we were going the wrong way, I think we were going the wrong way. So we've now changed direction. Where's the... Uh, two lions. Huh? Two lions. Two lions. Two lions here. Can we go up here? Yeah. Okay, well, let's go up here. Sure. All right. <laughs> Thank That's you. Me. Shoes. So, as per usual, we're doing steps. Look how sparkly it is. Disco Pagoda! Wow, I don't think this is where we're supposed to be though. I think we're lost again. So dramatic. So dramatic. Why? There's, there's the steps. Oh, there's, oh, the steps are just there, it's all good. Lucky I did not overreact there. We found more steps. I was totally just so preoccupied with filming a time lapse of coming up these stairs. That I got to this little platform here and I was looking at the camera to check it to see and totally didn't even look at the view. It's amazing and we're not even at the top yet. Look at this view! Oh, it's so beautiful. There's like pagodas everywhere. I just literally shocked myself because I had my head in a camera screen checking footage and now I suddenly looked up and was like, Whoa, look at this! Is it just me, Charlie, or is there something very unnerving about walking on an escalator with no shoes? It's very odd. Also, we must have walked up about 50 million steps, yet yeah, the last tiny bit they put an escalator in. I feel like this is cheating. I don't feel like I've achieved getting to the top. It's always Charlie, we're at the top. Oh my god, I don't like this. Are you ready? Disembark, disembark. Wah! After all of that, we made it to the top. I am definitely the colour of my t-shirt, but never mind. This view is spectacular. I wish I had a drone right now to really show you what it looks like, but I don't. So you just get some nice panoramic views. <laughs> what do you reckon, Tommy Roo? <laughs> By this point, we had only been in Myanmar for one full day but we were totally blown away by just how kind and friendly the people were and how stunning the country was. And we just couldn't wait to spend the next month here exploring. you were debating coming all the way up here. It's stunning. Also, a little travel tip for you. When everyone goes home just after the sun sets, the best time is often just after that because the light gets even more beautiful. And like now, all the night lights are turned on, the skyline looks stunning. If you just run off as soon as the sun sets, you miss this beautiful scenery. So just hang in there. We got up at three in the morning now like quarter to four because we booked it like totally last minute we are sitting in ordinary class which as you can see behind me is like hard seats not like from here which is where steve yellow and the budgeteers stayed when they were doing it and the nice comfy seats it's not even morning yet it's still yesterday it's still yesterday it's definitely still yesterday but look at this nice comfy seat we have here I have a suspicion that this is the speed the train is going to go the entire way. Oh man, I'm kind of hungry. I hope the snack lady comes along. <laughs> Something tells me the snack lady's not coming. Not for a while. Not for a while. I'm excited about this journey. It's going to be cool. It's going to be cool, right? It's going to be unforgettable. Rolling. It's a big thing that 
that is Charlie particularly concerned. The rock. And the door open. I don't care so much about the door open, but that's quite cool. I do care about the fact the train is rocking so much by the side it feels like it's gonna fall off its little rail. Not that you can really see it on camera, but the train was rolling so much that at one point all the bags fell off, so we had to make sure they were all tied on. It's 5.30. Been on this train for an hour and a half. <laughs> Thomas put his raincoat on. The sun is coming up though. We're not getting out of this one. <laughs> I'm loving this trade, it's amazing. For a while, I'll be by your side all the time. I feel like this train might be going. <laughs> it might go without me. No. What is kind of crazy though is that we couldn't get tickets for the upper class because it was full except there's no one in it. Which is very weird. Anyway, I'm gonna come and eat some breakfast before Tom eats it all. Spring onions, I think. Uh, Fried spring onions. Flavours are really good. Salty, sticky rice. Mm. This is delicious. Mm. And what have you got now, Tom? It tastes like, it's definitely got shrimp paste in it. <coughs> oh yeah? Very Probably subtle. Done. Could be anything, could be like bean could flour be or... <laughs> <laughs> Quite nice. It's our second day in Myanmar and I'm already loving it so much. It's like what Thailand used to be like 10 years ago. So much less Western influence and it's just so refreshing. Everywhere we've been so far, I have been to before. So this is like my first time here and I'm totally massively out of my comfort zone. I'm not gonna lie, when we first got on this train this morning, I was like, oh my God. I had to like scrub the seat down because it was covered in mud. Oh, I think we might be leaving. But um, it's just awesome, just seeing all the people. <laughs> One thing I forgot to say earlier was we are traveling around Myanmar in a totally different style to how we usually do it. Normally I have a fair amount of stuff like planned and booked in, but this time we are totally winging it. Like for instance, we were supposed to be staying in Mandalay for like three days and exploring and then possibly going off to do a hike in Sipor. But we emailed the guy and he only had a slot available tomorrow. So we were like, quick. Let's haul ass, let's get there. Hence why we're on a train today. <laughs> Push yourself out your comfort zone and do something different. I'm definitely a planner, so I'm quite enjoying just, you know, going with the flow a little more. Are you a planner or are you a go with the flu? I'm both. <laughs> when you plan, things seem to just fall into place better, obviously. For instance, if we had planned to do this a few more days in advance, we wouldn't be sat on the hardest chairs in the world. But you know, swings and roundabouts. Although these chairs could not be any harder. This is how bad it is. I pulled out a packing cube, tripped packing cube, just my add there. Using that as a cushion because it's so uncomfortable. <laughs> and we have how many more hours to go? Six, Six more hours. Yeah. We've kind of been stopped at this stop for quite a while. We've been here for half an hour. Yeah, that breakfast was delicious. We don't know what it was, but it was delicious. But you know, you're gonna try new stuff. What's the worst that can happen, hey? Well, in this country, you could get, you could get pretty sick, but you know. higher and we traveled further north into the Shan state. We realized this train journey was giving us a unique glimpse into the lifestyle of rural Myanmar. And it almost felt like we had traveled back in time. We're at the next stop. Well, I guess we're here. No 
idea how long for. Food adventure number two. <laughs> it's apparently delicious. We're above the clouds now again. Oh, it's all happening on here now. It's all happening. Here it is. That's what we're about to go over. So I thought it was a good time to give you two tips. First one is, if you don't book it early enough to get in upper class and you end up in ordinary class, make sure you bring something to sit on, like a towel, because it is like solid. And the second tip is, make sure you have small notes, so if you want to buy drinks and food from the ladies that come round, you don't have to give them a 5,000 note. That's kind of same for anywhere though, if you go in on like little journeys or out to the countryside where it's a little bit more rural. It's 1.20, we've been on here since 4 o'clock in the morning. I think it's only an hour left. Get me off this train, please. Excuse me. I was just about to go, why am I so tired? I haven't really done much. And then I realized it's gone up at three o'clock in the morning. We just made it to the hotel. Thank goodness. I think I'm just gonna get some admin done and then maybe go for a little explore. You making a coffee? Yeah. Eight hours on a train. Eight hours on a train that was going sway, 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 sway. It was pretty crazy. I'm so tired. I'm so glad I'm off that train though. I mean, that was a mission, right? I suggest we chill out, go get a beer. What do you reckon? Fantastic idea. Yay. It is spectacular. Look at this view. I am excited about going on a track tomorrow. This is just stunning. I mean, it's like magic hour at the moment. I'm just watching people fish down here. Okay, signing off. What a day. Good morning. <laughs> um, so we arrived yesterday uh, in Seaport and there was this epic view from our balcony. It was like magic hour and it was amazing. I totally forgot to film it because we were really hungry. We got off the train so we went for food and totally missed it. And now, as you can see behind me, it's pretty crap. So you're never gonna see that. You just have to come here yourself. Anyway, we're in a bit of a rush to get packed as per usual. Uh, because we're going off on this hike. So I better get off camera and uh, get checked out. <laughs> you ready for your hike? Well, you're in jeans, which is a bit weird, but you know. It's cold. <laughs> it's cold, it's the only warm thing. We don't have enough warm clothes for this hike. We did not prepare for this weather at all. We're not really sure what we've signed ourselves up to, to be honest. Not really sure. It's character building. What is all the dust in the air? Moisture chat. <laughs> Moisture. Little specks of cloud. So we've just been dropped off. Our taxi's leaving. We were only a small group with our guide Batchet and three other people. It's so peaceful and quiet and beautiful up here. It was freezing cold this morning so I have a million layers on and now I'm taking them off one by one. <laughs> Monty? Yes. Yes, uh, at the base of that mountain, it's have like a big river and it have a camp. After Batch had explained the route to us, it became very clear that what we signed up to was not going to be easy. 
We're going up that mountain there. Wah! They have a different dialect here, so the way you say hello up here is my son ka. It's not Minglaba. My son ka. We've been going uphill for like two hours or something. Look at the scenery. We are in proper rural Myanmar right now. Tea break. We got tea and this view. This is the best I've felt, I reckon, <laughs> so far in the fresh air. No stress, <laughs> no traffic. No traffic. Just walking up the mountain in beautiful fresh air. It's just Mr. Bike's door. They are our portals yeah. and they were cooked for us. Okay. Cool. Cool. Sounds good. Mon and Han. Mon cool. And Han. Yeah. Bye -bye. So we got our portals to say goodbye to the village. Mon and Han. <laughs> And that was the last time we were going to see any sort of village for the next few days. We stopped at a really shitty place for lunch. By the river! We got water buffalo over there. Lunch. Yum. I think things just got serious because now we need walking sticks. I think this one's yours, Chad. Is it? Can I have this one? The little one. <laughs> Yay! The little short, one. Short one for you. Perfect. <laughs> I've never done a hike with a walking stick before. I mean, is this to pick up leaves? <laughs> Here we go. I don't want someone fall down. <laughs> oh my god. He just runs across. That's a pretty awesome view. There's a reason the budgeteers didn't film this bit, eh? Holy sh <laughs> This is hard work. We're going up a cliff when you need a walking stick. It's a serious hike. But there's a serious view down there. I'm sure we'll see it in a minute. Not gonna lie, that was pretty hard work. <laughs> 30 minutes of serious uphill. It's just relentless. So if you've been backpacking for like six weeks and haven't been to the gym, you're gonna struggle. It's heavy, right? <laughs> Pretty heavy. Can't even pick it up. Oh no, it's all right when it's on. What does it look like? Look like a turtle. Look like a turtle. <laughs> okay, so earlier when I pointed at the mountain and said, we're going up there. I didn't expect to be going straight up. This is hard work. I can understand why the budgeteers did not film this bit. Because seriously, I can barely talk and walk. I'm exhausted. Can someone please create a GoPro stick that doubles as a hiking pole? That'd be really helpful. A bamboo pole, I'm like hanging onto the GoPro at the same time. Dogs have found something. What have they found? A guy said that last time the dogs started barking, they found a bear. Running back with the machine. I mean, what's in the jungle? It could be anything. <laughs> it was a um, the grizzly bear, so. Yeah, I was about to say, we need a dramatic ending, we can't have it. oh, we just don't know what it was. Normally we arrive here around about, there are 2.30 or close to 3. Okay, well, well, what, what, what time is it? Not really? It's because we've got the Swiss 
they're like speedy, speedy Swiss. It is true, he knows it. Whenever he has Swiss on his tour, all the Swiss, they race around everywhere. They're too fast, it's so funny. What? Yeah, I think so, thank you. What snacks are these? Um, we call it pillow snack because this looks like pillow. Pillow? Wow. Mm. A pillow snack? Pillow snack. It wasn't long before we were on the go again, but this time there was a lot less uphill, which as you can see by my face here, I was a lot happier about. They just drop straight down. We're really high. Look how awesome this is, we really can't see it on this camera properly, but I promise you, it's well worth coming up here. We are heading to, can't even see it on here. We're going, zooming, zooming, zooming. Can you see that red? Right there, that's where we're heading, that tree house. Everyone's worst nightmare. We've just yeah. found a tarantula yeah. hole. Yeah, but what's the big one? A big one. Yeah. Can we catch it? <laughs> what is it? Yeah. That's what a big it? hole. <laughs> I'm gonna try and catch the tarantula. We have plenty of time, right? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, this is what Tom does. And here we have Tom creating. Trying to, it's not working very well. Hair tight, Charlie, a little scrunchy. Ah, oh, you can't use my. Trust me. I need that back. Yeah, if the tarantula eats it, I'm not we'll gonna. Yeah, he's got it. The tack on the. That's hilarious, really. Yep. What happens if it runs out? That's the idea. <gasps> you want it to run out? Oh my god, right, back up, back up. I'm really scared <laughs> about what's going to come out of there. Big spider, Charles. Yeah, I know, I don't want to see a big spider. <laughs> this is how to catch a tarantula with a hair tie. Oh, I'm really scared that this thing's just going to run out and attack us. This is as close as I want to be to this. Yeah. yeah, it's not that big, is it? Still don't want it to. Um, bigger than it looks actually on the camera. No, not so Unfortunately, we failed on our tarantula catching attempt. He does not want to come out and play. Thank God. Whoa! Look at this! Seven. That's so cool! Oh my God! This tree house is so awesome! This is amazing. I have never seen anything like this. <laughs> Welcome to the tree house. Welcome to our little house for the night. I kind of wish I had a drone right now. <laughs> There's our little deck chairs with that view. Oh. And then we got dinner cooking down there. I really love the show uh, Bear Grylls the Island, oh, yeah. where they put these British people out on this island and they really don't do what they really suffer. <laughs> you come over here and you just look at the stuff. I know, there. they've just built like nothing. Uh, genuinely. Yeah. And it just goes to show you how far gone. Like, how what? How far, how far gone our society is? Well, I think what Tom is trying to explain is if he got left on a desert island, he would have it built this bamboo shack and chairs and everything by the end of it. As long as he had endless supply of beer, he'd be fine. Currently, right now, I'm sat in a bamboo chair with this view. I mean... <laughs> this is something else. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty tough, right? Yeah. That's not a trek for someone that's never done trekking before. Yeah, even someone who started traveling in good, who was in good shape, if you haven't like, done If you haven't done anything, it'd be hard, really hard work. Three months. Yeah, it's struggle. Yeah, like me. It was pretty hard work. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it took to get this view. 183 floors, 20,000 steps, and 13k. But totally worth it for this. This is just... <laughs> In a bamboo tree house. Cheers, honey. This tea is so hot. 
Wow, look at this. Dinner time. Yum. Just got real. <laughs> we spent the rest of the evening just chatting and trying to stay warm by drinking rum. Said, Rue, smell that. Smell that. We're leaving the tree house. Bye, tree house. Hi, little. Bye, tree house. Bye. For the first day. For the first day. Now we are starting the second day. The second day. Woohoo! Oh God, here we go. I almost died on that hill. <laughs> Careful, this part is a bit stiff down. Yeah. So if you are doing the three day hike, we're on day two right now, you obviously can't carry it and up water. They have like little bamboo things set up here, which is like fresh river water. Apparently it's safe to drink. Don't really trust it. So bring some water purification tablets with you. Have you put it in? Yeah. Day two, we're still alive. Crazy enough. Tom's sleeping in his hammock. Very sketchy situation, by the way. Very sketchy. And Tom is about to fall out of the hammock. It's just that there that I'm worried about. That little bit, I'm not sure whether that's gonna hold. But it's quite cute, right? It's nice. What is Roman creating now? Sailing boat. <laughs> A sailing boat. Look what he's created. Where's he going to launch it? <laughs> I think the boat's too big! Oh. oh no! The boat's sinking! Make it look graceful, Charlie. You shall not pass! <laughs> so we've just done a little bit more uphill, getting a bit sweaty. We've come out into this like meadow. It's so peaceful and there's really colourful flowers everywhere. Tom's looking for tarantulas. Big mountain over there. <laughs> big mountain. We're looking at the big mountain. Here is just <laughs> big mountain is the same as this big mountain. And what I was saying was walking down, you focus on walking, you know, you stop a little bit, your knees hurt, whatever, you lose in your mind perspective. Like perspective. Yeah. No? And you're actually walking down a mountain. Yeah. And you wonder why your knees are sore. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Badget? Hard track? Yes, yeah, it's, it's really hard track. <laughs> it's a really yeah, hard track. Yeah, and thing. like adventure. Really adventure. adventure. Totally. It is yeah. an adventure. Look, we just come from there. You can't even see the path. <laughs> Where are we? Is this Jumanji? Are we in Jumanji? I think so. I'm pretty sure we are, Charlie. <laughs> if you're He's not right. In, if you're not in like quite good reasonable shape, no, I'd say. Not even reasonable, like quite good shape. You're gonna struggle. 
if you're a bit less fit than that, you'll struggle quite a bit. Yeah. If you're less fit than that, you shouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. You will not enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, it is hard work. There's a lot of up and then there's a lot of down. If you've got bad knees, don't even think about no, it. <laughs> no way. That is so cool. But it is worth it for this view. <laughs> it's going down, Charlie. We're crossing this bamboo river with the massive leaf. <laughs> That's the hat I wanted. My new hat. He's a strong man. Look. Strong man. It's Mr. Bird. He's going for it. We made it. We. Once you've had a drink and I've chilled out, I will show you around this awesome little complex. It's so amazing. Would you like a shot? <laughs> Would you like a shot? Oh, a shot, little bamboo shot. <laughs> Look at that. That's so cute. Let's do, line them up. Line them up. Do some shots of this. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding me? No. Is he mental? Cheers. What a day, what a day. What a day. Another one. <laughs> Man. This is a really, really tough two days hike. Bring your A game because you're going to need it. <laughs> yep, and bring something to mix with the rum. If you're with Mr. Bike, they gave us this to drink last night and we were like, yum, what are we going to do? Yeah. Which is why we're now drinking it with coffee. And it's rum and coffee no, no, taste no. suspiciously it's like it, it, Baileys. It, 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 it even looks like Baileys. Tastes like Baileys. Scrummy. Tastes like, really Tastes like Baileys. Very similar. So before the light completely goes, I'm going to just show you where we are. We basically just hiked like round and down to here, down to this bamboo bridge. And then you come into this village. Ah, look at that. So this river is where we go tubing tomorrow, except I don't know if we're gonna go tubing because it's like 10 degrees and the water is so cold. We're here because you know uh, the budget is <coughs> Steve and Paddy. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, and Paddy. exactly. Yeah, see, I'm friends with Paddy. I haven't met Steve yet, but yeah, that's why we're here. <laughs> yeah, but you are the one you're making this one. Yes. This is the real one. This is the real one. Yeah. For them, it's at rainy time, we can't come here. Yeah. So ah, they, where did they go? At the village. Yeah. From the village, they go down, start there. Okay. So, so sometimes a bit difficult for you. Yeah. <laughs> so, they didn't so there we go, Paddy. We're doing the real experience. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> go with Mr. Bird. No. <laughs> Mr. Bird. <Burke. laughs> so when those guys came, mm -hmm. did they do all that walking? No. No. They no. From after lunch, after your lunch. Oh, they, they probably did what? The, uh, next we let the slab there. This was much harder, Paddy. Nah. <laughs> it's well, only a little bit much. We're gonna pretend four it was. Four hours we'll of pretend, extra yeah. walking. <laughs> cheers. 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 <laughs> Boom. That's alright. Yeah. <laughs> it's like oh, so so That's strong. That's a better way to drink it. Actually. <laughs> Do you know what? I really feel like I've achieved something on this hike. Like it has been pretty tough. I have some pretty horrendous blisters on my feet. So I, you know what, I'm going to be honest, this is probably one of the first things that's actually properly pushed me out of my comfort zone since we've been travelling. And I think there's going to be lots more in this country. I'm basically loving this country. It's like how Thailand used to be like 10 years ago. Well, not quite, a bit less developed than how Thailand was. But that's the kind of feeling you get here. It's really refreshing, you know, because Asia is just getting so Western. Even when you go to like Thai restaurants or Cambodian restaurants, they all have like burgers and pizza on the menu and it's just not quite the same as it used to be. Now I sound like a grandma. Don't trench your desiring what you can control. We fly, we fly, try so hard together and we might, we might be lost but not forever. having bamboo sticky rice for breakfast and it's so yummy. I've decided that bamboo is life. Oh yum. What you do is you dip the sticky rice in sugar and it's so delicious. It's day three. Wah. Still trekking in the jungle. I'm not gonna lie, pretty dirty. Could do with a shower right now. And this has been amazing. Mr. Bike, you're very cool. It's really awesome to see, he's like the boss, but he's there, hands on, building the village. He's not sat in an office somewhere. He's there, doing it himself. It's brilliant. And what is also great, is he is taking advice from the tourists, like what to put in their tour. Like for instance, 
the reason that the tubing happens is because some guys came along and they were like, oh, the river's awesome, you should do tubing. Same as the tubing in Laos. I don't know how um, keen I am to get in the water. It's pretty chilly, but it's also moving pretty fast. I might drown. Anyway, I'm gonna have to put the camera away before I fall flat on my face. But sun and rain and trust in letting go. We've made it to the little beach where we're going to get picked up in the boat. It's actually quite a nice temperature. I think I might do it. Up we go! Down the rapids! It takes a bit of suffering, sleepless nights of wandering, before you make it safely to the end, the end. There's things in life you simply need to know, but sun and rain and trust in letting go. It takes a bit of suffering, sleepless nights of wandering, before you make it safely. So we've made it back to civilization. Turns out it wasn't too cold to do the tubing. So we did a little bit of it, like about 15, 20 minutes. You totally don't have to get in the river if you don't want to. I know it says tubing, but there is a boat that takes you the entire way. So you don't have to, but I recommend it because it's really good fun, even if it's a bit chilly. And we're back where we started, back into civilization. It's like it never happened. It's like we never went to the jungle. That was definitely an adventure. That's a day after the trek. We are leaving Sipur, going back to Mandalay. We have grabbed a private taxi because we didn't want to do 12 hours on the train. This shared taxi is like $15 each and the train in ordinary class is $2. So it's obviously considerably cheaper to do the train. But you know, train is 12 hours, taxi is four. Time is money. That was great in theory, however, in true Southeast Asia style, the taxi took much longer than we were expecting. And we also hadn't thought about the route either. In the middle of quite a few hairpin bends. This is the valley that the train goes over. Not feeling the best. The taxi took about six and a half hours, but we finally made it back to Mandalay just in time for sunset. Then the next day, we decided to check out the famous Yuvain Bridge. We are about to go under the bridge! There's a snake under the bridge. Is there? So it's not quite as busy as I thought it was going to be. Maybe we're just on a good day, I don't know. But the boats are starting to come out. And we're just watching some guys over here, just doing some fishing. Well, the boats are so cool, look at this. We have set up shop ready for the sunset and we have beer and this is pretty chilled out. There's serious Instagrammers that need to get the full bridge and have serious zoom lenses and then everyone here just is taking photos with their phones. Uh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> bye bye! <laughs> yeah. bye, -bye. We're gonna head back to the hotel soon, get all our stuff packed up because we are heading to Bagan! Yeah! I bet you can't guess what we're doing today. So the plot thickens. Bagan is on lockdown. I have to conquer my fear. I have to get on the bike. We finally arrived in Inlay Lake. Destination number two. We have no idea where it is, but it's probably gonna be awesome! 
thanks for watching guys and remember that if you would like to explore some of these places and think you might like to go on a tour around Southeast Asia then I really recommend the Dragon Trip who are the company that I travelled China with in series 1. Plus you can get a discount if you use my code in the description box below. And as always I'm more than happy to answer any questions, just drop me a message.